Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Now today's review is on another fan. I've already reviewed three fans, all of them Silvercrest fans from Lidl's, that's like their own make. And uh, if you check out up here, the cards up above when I uh, point them out, you'll find reviews on that. Now the first one I did a review on was this um, pedestal fan here. I then did one on a little box sort of fan that you filled with ice cubes or chilled water and that oh, I thought was absolute rubbish. Again, check out uh, the review up here on, on that. I took that back and got a refund. It was that bad. And then the third review I did was on this, sort of like a tower oscillating fan. Again, check out the review on that. But today's one is this. It's a bit bigger. I'll just put my glasses on. As you can see, it's a pedestal fan. Now, I've already got a pedestal fan like this that I've had for donkey's years. I forget even where I got it from. Like a, I'll show you shortly. It's like a, a purple colour and it oscillates and it's three speeds. But the thing that caught my eye on this one was, and you can see there, here where my little finger is, it's got a remote control in this one, which appealed to me because we have it at the foot of our bed. When it's a really hot summer now, and, and I'm recording this now, the first week in September, so summer is coming to an end very, very shortly, so I've got it at the wrong time, really. But we have used the pedestal fan year after year on the hottest summer nights at the foot of the bed and left it running all night to keep us cool. But what appeals to me on this, like I say, is that it's got a remote, so you can turn it on and off from your bed. Now, I haven't done the unboxing yet, so we'll do that now. Take all the bits out, and then I'm going to have a read, as usual, of the instructions. Put it all together. I'll do it. I'll, I'll have to do it in the lounge. I haven't got enough room in here to fill me putting some of this size together. And then we're going to do some tests comparing it to the, the pedestal fan that I've already got and the little desktop fan I've got behind me there. So, uh, so let's see what you get in the box. I've not even taken them out myself yet. All I've done is uh, cut the cellar tape and open it. So first of all, we have the base. It's available in two colours, by the way. I picked the uh, the dark one, the black one. You can get it in white as well. So I've got this base, plastic base. As you see, the pedestal fan I've got on the moment has got four metal legs. But this is a round plastic base. We'll be comparing how steady the two are, but it's pretty solid. Very light, lightweight, but pretty solid feeling. Then we have the blade itself. Very, very lightweight blade. Lighter weight than that, I think. Again, we'll I'll show you in detail soon. But it looks to uh, to be uh, exactly the same fitting as the white desktop one behind me. But quite, quite thin, wobbly blades. Don't know how they'll sort of have, hold up compared to that. And noise-wise, again, we'll be testing the noise. So I've got that there. Then a little bag there containing the remote control. I'm just looking at the remote control now. It's got speed, oscillation, timer, mode and power. I'll go into this in detail later on. I'll have to have a read up and uh, see what exactly that does. But I'll show you that in detail shortly. And the usual little type instruction book, which is really, really thick, but only, yeah, what about half, probably a third, 17 pages of English instructions. And most of them, I would imagine, will be safety instructions like they usually are very little on, on anything else but anything important in there I'll, I'll point out to you later and we've got 
this bit of the fan there. Uh, sorry, this bit of the guard at the front. If two are together. Again, we'll show you in detail how this goes together, but obviously a larger diameter than that. See the difference in size there. So you have two halves of your guard. And we've got this. So I'm only just viewing this for the first time myself. I'll show you what these bits do and how it goes together shortly. And we've got the main motor. That's the bags removed. Complete with a UK three pin plug. Again, I'll, I'll check a few. In fact, I'll check the fuse on this right now. Let's see what fuse they've put in it. It should be just a three amp fuse. So it'll use hardly any current in this. And yes, it is. Like I said, that. But it is, take my word for it, it is a red 3 amp fuse. So, correctly fused as well. And again, we'll go through all how you set this up, but quite a hefty weight on that. 45 watts the power consumption, so pretty easy. You've got all these indicator lights on here as well we've got oscillate mode timer on off the same you've got on your remote control so uh, let's go and set this up now in the lounge and i'll walk you through how we screw it together first of all and then we'll go through what how it operates including the remote control and compare it to the desktop fan in noise and the existing pedestal fan in noise and airflow as well Let's go and do that now. Okay, so just before we do those tests, I've just tagged this bit onto the uh, the end of the intro because I forgot to tell you the price and show you some 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 comparisons. The price is really really cheap, nineteen ninety nine, so just under twenty quid, and I think that f that for a pedestal fan with remote control and timer is an absolute bargain. If we have a look on uh, Amazon now, I'll just show you some of the comparison prices so if we look here there's this one here it's uh 29.99 but it's not remote control as we come down here there's this one here that is remote control and that's 31 20. um this ridiculously priced one's there 150 quid this Beldre one, three setting, three speed settings, the same remote control timer, seventy quid. So I haven't seen any. This one here is one of the cheapest with a, a cross base like the, the one I'll be showing you, my older one, and that is twenty six quid, and that is not a remote control one, no timer. So as you can see, there is nothing on here, as cheap as the one in Lidl's. And uh, don't forget, it's got a three-year warranty as well. So yeah, as you saw there, an absolute bargain, I think, at £19.99. Remote control, three speeds, oscillating and timer function for less than 20 quid and a three-year warranty. That's one of the main things from Pound from Lidl or Aldi. You get a three-year warranty that they do stand by. I see some of the other videos for that and uh, so yeah 20 quid absolute bargain so right let's get into them tests now okay so we've moved into the lounge now because the uh, the man shed isn't big enough uh, in the words of the film jaws we need a bigger man shed so i've had a dry run with it already just to check how everything goes now the instruction book is actually sort of quite detailed it gives you full instructions and the list of parts, as you can see on, on this page, you can sort of fold that out and place the book there with this bit permanently out and as you turn pages following the instruction book. So we'll go along with it from uh, page number eight, assembling it. So what you do first, it says the base plate, 
this and the L-shaped screw which is this are already fitted to the lower end of the pedestal on on delivery so you take this out you'll find it it comes with that already and you unscrew that L-shaped screw with the washer on the end and then you put this bit in the base it's absolutely straightforward enough but uh, that then goes there the washer on this part of it and that just screws in normally anti-clockwise to tighten and you screw that and you can feel it pulling the tubular plastic stand in so just do that hand tight and that's now solid in the base once you've done that place the pedestal on the base or on the underneath it tells you to do that now it says unscrew the circlip 12 a little it calls this bit here a circlip well it's not a circlip it's just a an adjustable thing so you just undo that slightly like that and then inside here you pull up this tube so just pull it up to about there just enough that we'll be doing shortly to slide the next bit on and then you tighten that down so once you've done that got that tight obviously hand tight will do don't use grips on or anything like that it's just plastic once you've got that in you then get the main unit itself and you put that on there you'll see that metal bit we just pulled out goes in this hole here and once that's in you tighten this screw so make sure that screw is backed out enough to clear that tube then put that on there like that screw that down and then you tighten that what I found when I first did it was that I had to sorry, undo that I had to actually hold this piece here while I screwed this top bit, bit on it because this bit here the actual motor assembly is a very tight fit on this uh, thin steel rod so you've got to if this what they call the circlip isn't gripping the tube the metal tube enough you might have to hold it with your hands while you push this bit on once that's on just tighten that up then you can tighten that down for now we'll adjust the height later Okay, so in the instruction book, it says loosen this knob. Once you've got the base piece in here, it says loosen this knob here. But what it actually means is remove it. So we've mounted the motor assembly on it now. What you do next is take this knob off here. Just undoing it the normal way anti-clockwise put that to one side and you'll notice here there is a steel pin through the motor shaft here and that engages in two cutouts in the fan blade and there's also these two pegs here and they go in the back of the guard so the next stage is you take the back piece of the guard and you will find a little hole there that once you've got it all together a little tiny nut and bolt goes through there and you make sure that is at the bottom of the fan the lower end as you're putting it together so this wire bit there that sort of like coat hanger shaped thing that goes at the top this little hole for the nut and bolt goes at the bottom so as we're offering this up onto here 
again if you look at it's close up you'll see it goes in the middle and then two vertical slots engage over them pegs so I'm gonna to have to put the phone down now so I'll catch up on later but once you've got it lined up you sort of like hold it in the middle it moves about that much but you get them right in the middle so they're equidistant each side and then we tighten the knob up so we put that on now like I say it's a bit hard trying to film this I need a cameraman as well but as we get this near tightness you can see I've come off one of the lugs there at the top it's come off the lug so there we're back over the lug at the top there and the bottom so you would line that up till it's bang in the middle you've just got a bit of movement like that so get that in the middle while you tighten this and then one final make sure it's all centralised and give that knob a tighten up by hand so that's the back piece now on like I said the little hole is at the bottom so the next bit now is to put the fan blade on so again you'll see in the back there's two bit hard to see but there's two little cutouts each side of that and they engage over that pin so if you line them up push that over get that, get that lined up with them pins and then this bit here which comes with it in the pack screws on now this screws on it's on it there if you notice tighten it's a left hand thread on this normally you would turn it clockwise to tighten but on this because of the rotation of the fan you turn it anti-clockwise so you can see the anti-clockwise to tighten it and then once that is on and tightened up just give the fan a spin with your hand just to check it's not catching on anything and we're now ready to put this front cover on so again obviously at the front cover we've got the little hole in the bottom that lines up with this hole here it's a slightly elongated hole as you can see and that has got to line up with that one there there are four swing over brackets around the periphery like that. and then at the very top we've got this hook type bracket which just hooks over the lip of the back piece of the fan so you line that up at the top and this holes these holes have got to line up perfectly here so you may find you have to twist this around it's not exactly sort of perpendicular necessarily but so you might have to twist this around again i'll put my phone down now move this around backwards and forwards while you're lining up that hole at the bottom there and in that hole you put this tiny nut and bolt again that comes in a plastic bag with the remote control so we've got them clips swung out of the way now we'll put that little nut and bolt through there so you just need a small Phillips screwdriver for this 
it's only a tiny, tiny little thing. Just sort of get that started, but keep it quite loose and then just line up this back plate. Swing the clips in position. As you do that, it, it helps centralize it. And then give that a final tighten up. Like that. And as you can see, that's now in place. The little nut and bolt, and we've got these four clips swung over here. Like that. Okay, so that's the whole thing assembled now. If you want to adjust the pitch of it, it's just as simple as pushing it forward and back. Again, there's a bigger Phillips screwdriver there. You shouldn't need to adjust that, but you can tighten or loosen that if you need to, and that gives you the pitch. So so once that's on there and you've we tightened this screw before, you can loosen this, what they call the circlip, and pull that up to the height you want. Two-handed job. So pull that up to its full height. Tighten that down. And there we have it. So it's just a matter of unplugging the plug. I would say it's on, it's about a metre or so cord. Could do with being slightly longer really, I suppose, but for, for something like this, you may have to use an extension lead. Uh, a nice three metre long cable would have been nice, but it's, I'll put a caption on the bottom here exactly how long this wire is from, from here to the plug. I'm going to plug that in now behind and uh, we'll get it all set up and I'll show you in detail what the controls here on the front do and then we'll compare it in uh, amount of waft coming out and noise etc compared to me uh, existing pedestal fan. Okay so we'll now go into uh, how it works, uh, what all the functions are. Some strange sort of indicator lights and way of doing it and that, and it's not brilliant in some respects, but at least it is there, the facility to turn it on and off, so you can just lie in bed and turn it on and off, but there's some strange modes and that, as you'll s s shortly see. So I'll show you on the remote as well, as, as well as the main unit on here. Now, it remembers its settings, so whatever you had it set at last time, as long as it stays plugged in there at the wall, it remembers all them settings. If you've unplugged it, it defaults back to its normal settings, which is sort of like normal and low speed, and that it tells you in the book. So what we'll do, we'll turn it on, and like I say, you can turn it on either here or the remote. We'll use the remote. And it bleeps twice. Now, it's come on in oscillating mode. Now, I've got the camera zoomed in on the controls, but I can show you it's oscillating round. I'll show you that properly in a bit. But on this bit, we'll just concentrate on the controls. So this setting here, oscillate, or this on your remote, oscillate, turns the oscillation on and off. So you can see the red LED has gone out on oscillate. It's fixed now in the direction it was when we pressed it. As we press it again, it comes on. Now, the speed is this on the remote, this little rising speed setting here, or on the unit itself, it's hard to see, but there's a plus and a minus here. So as you press the plus there, or the minus, you'll see there's a red LED now on low, and then there's medium and high. So if I go up, up to medium. Don't know whether you can see the red LED, but this red LED has gone on to medium and then again onto high. 
and the same with the remote. If I press the speed control, medium, high, low, medium, high. So we'll put it on low. So that's your speed settings. I say you've got your oscillation settings on or off. We'll put it on fixed there so it blows away from the mic while I show you these. Now this one here is, is a bit of a strange one. Mode. On the remote it's got like a little picture of a palm tree and some Zs. And on here it's got normal, natural and sleep. And what it is, as you press it, so on this one you would press mode, on this one you'd press the remote. So again, as we press remote, you'll see now, opposite here where it says norm, NOR for normal, NAT for natural, and SLP for sleep. There's no LED on. There's a very, very slight illuminance off that one, but it's just the background light from that. It's not actually lit up. So that's in normal mode now i.e. it's just blowing out at medium, low, medium or high speed. If we change the mode to the next one, natural, that LED goes green. And what that does, you can probably hear now, There, I don't know whether you heard it, it ramped up in volume. And this is the natural setting. And what it says in the book, natural mode, rising and falling airflow simulates a natural wind. So <laughs> that's supposed to simulate a natural wind. It's basically ramping it up from low to high and then back down to low to high. So that isn't a natural wind. You never go out in the wind and it's and it ramps up from low to high and then uh, three seconds later goes down to low and then goes up and then goes down. But that's what it's called, the natural, uh, that would just annoy me. That The next one, when you press mode, or again this button here, the green light will go out and the red LED comes on and that is sleep. And again, from the book, it reads, what does it say? Sleep mode, a soft, light airflow like a natural breeze for operation during sleep. Well, to me, that just turns it onto low speed. It's the same as low speed. I can't measure the RPMs it's doing, but it just looks to me the same speed as low. So you might as well just press it on to low. So normal is just your low, medium, high. Natural ramps the speed up, ramps the speed down. And sleep, it's on a low, gentle breeze, which to me is the same as turning it to low. You've then got your timer controls. So again, on here, you've got the same on your remote. There, timer. And this button here, timer. Now you can set, that's a sleep timer. So once you've pressed that, it will go off from anywhere from half an hour to seven hours or seven and a half hours. Now each of these LEDs, and there's one, two, three, four, four LEDs there represents half an hour. Now again I would imagine putting a digital display on would have cost more money. So this is the easy way out but it doesn't make it that easy to read. But what you do is, when you've pressed the timer for the first time, so either this button here or there on your remote, press it on here this time, you'll see this top 0.5, that's half an hour button, uh, LED light up. So I don't know whether you can see that lit up. Yeah, we're fully zoomed in there as it is. But uh, yeah. Half an hour is lit up 0.5. So in half an hour from when you first press that, the fan will shut off. If I press it again, timer, it goes on to one. So that will shut off now after one hour. Press it again, 
the half comes back on with the one so that's one and a half hours so you can only set it in half hour increments so it'll now turn off in one and a half hour and you make you work out how long it's going to be by adding these together press it again it's gone down to two hours press it again two and a half hours press it again two and one three hours press it again two one and a half three and a half hours press it again four hours just the four is lit up press it again the half comes back on four and a half hours five hours five and a half hours four and two is six hours six and a half hours four two and one is seven hours and all four lit up seven and a half hours so uh, press it again and the timer function goes off so that's it that's all your controls and uh, to me all it really needs is the high medium and low the oscillation and the timer function is uh, quite handy but I think the the mode the sleep which means a gentle sort of sleep that's confusing it with the sleep timer but uh, the sleep mode on the the mode thing is just like a low speed and the natural ramping up and down is uh, pretty unnatural to me but uh, there you go but at least you can lie in bed and just turn it on and off and then we can turn the entire thing off with the remote here press that and the whole machine shuts off okay so i've set up the new fan here obviously along with this one this is my existing uh, pedestal fan that we use in the bedroom and as i mentioned on the intro i've had this quite a number of years it's a maxim it's 60 watts this one and the new one is 45 watts so the new one uses a bit less power um, if anything i would say the plastics are pretty comparable really this bit here on the older one feels a bit more substantial i suppose than this and it is a bit heavier the legs it's on it's like a cross section and it's not as stable as that there's there's an adjusting foot on each corner to level it up but uh, it's not still not quite as stable as this one they both do sort of wobble now the new one the guard measures in diameter 16 inches and the older one is yeah just oh it's about it's just over 16 inches it looks bigger but it's uh, it's not it's only about half an inch bigger the diameter of the fan blades the new one is about 13 inches and the old one a bit big i would say it's probably 14 inches uh, this one the blade is a bit nearer the edge than that now in height this is as high as each one will go and this one the older one will go up to 52 inches and this one as you can see it's not as much as 49 inches or so and the diameter of this desktop fan that 13 inches the guards the guard and the fan blade itself about seems to be about 10 10 and a half inches so i'm gonna line these up now all exactly the same height and i'm going to place this wind speed meter again check the link above for a review i did a while ago on that and this db meter pretty sure i did a review of that as well check above if i did and we're just going to measure the noise output from each one in exactly the same position and see what sort of speed we get on this i can't say there'll be much difference between the two larger fans and uh, you never know, this might be uh, 
just as good. So we'll, we'll just try it on the first speed and the full speed. We'll, uh, we won't bother with the middle speeds. So uh, yeah, I'll just set that up now and uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it all set up now. I've, I've measured these distances from the fan to the anemometer and the dB meter and the height from the, the table and everything. So they're all gonna be exactly the same. We're gonna measure now, first of all, the new fan to see what uh, the readings for the, the wind speed and the, the volume are and the sound as well. I'll film them on my phone and then we'll set up the other two fans to compare them. Obviously, I'll be really, really quiet when we're doing the, the dB bit. So we'll just turn this new fan on now. Okay, so this is the new fan on its lowest speed. And we've got, showing on the anonometer velocity, 0 0.98, going up to 1. 1.1, 1.2, and we'll change to that one, which is flow, and that's 0.91. So we'll go back to velocity, and we'll go up to speed 3. So here we are at speed three. And I'll be holding my phone in the same place on all three fans. So we're up to like two, two point one the lot of uh, velocity and the flow of getting bouncing round about two. So we'll check the sound now. So the sound level, I'll be quiet obviously when I take the sound. So this is the new fan on full speed. About 55 dB, we'll go down to speed. One. So as you see, around about 40 dB. I can't hear that fan. On lowest speed, it's still quite cool, quite a bit of air coming out. That would not annoy you at all in your bedroom. It's really, really quiet. So, uh, right, let's check these other fans now. Okay, so here we are on the older pedestal fan. Exactly the same distances and uh, Let's check out the readings on this. This is on speed low. So this is the older pedestal fan on low speed and on velocity setting on the anemometer, we're getting up to 1.9-ish, something like that. And on area, not area, flow, on flow, 1.0 from uh, just around about 1. To 1.02. Now, so we speed it up to full speed. Staying on the flow, 1.0. It's amazing how much, how little it seems to make a difference from low to. It's actually come down. One. Yeah, velocity. point 
getting around, still around about one. And on the decibel meter on low speed. And this is the old pedestal fan. I'll be quiet while I measure the low speed. Around about 44 dB. I'll turn it up to high. I'd say an average of 53, 53 and a half dB on high. Right, let's try the desk fan now. Okay, so this is the desk fan. As you see, I've had to raise it on the platform to get it the same height off the deck. So on speed one, on the desk fan, we've got a velocity of one, 1.2, flow, again the same, 1.2, turn it up to speed three, absolutely no difference. <laughs> A bit more. And velocity. One point four. And the sound levels. So this is on, this is the desk fan on speed one. Fifty dB definitely sounds louder on speed one than the, than the pedestal fans. And on speed two. Averaging out at about 55.5, something like that. But, uh, definitely noisier. The ambient room, temp room sound for all three tests is this. Thirty-five is a totally silent room. Okay, I think that concludes all the tests in here. So before I do the conclusion and uh, have a look at the, the test results that you've just seen, uh, I thought I'd show you this because I missed this out of, uh, of the filming in the front room. I'll show you the oscillation, how much it turns. It turns 85 degrees. So if we turn it on now with the remote control, as I mentioned in the, the bit you've just seen if you leave the fan plugged into the mains it remembers its last setting so whatever you uh, you turn it on at the speed the oscillation and the mode which i explained earlier it will come back on at them so if you if you left it oscillating on speed two when you turn it back on it will come on at that if you unplug it from the wall plug and then plug it back in it defaults back to uh just a normal set, which is normal mode, no oscillation, and low speed. It doesn't remember the timer, so if you've set it on two and a half hours, when you turn it off, that, that timer won't be back on at two and a half hours. So uh, you've got to set the timer each time. So I'll show you the oscillation now, how fast and how far it moves. And I'll put it on speed one, so turn it on. And we're on speed one now, and I'll turn it on oscillate. As you can see, great using the remote control. Now, as it's approaching the microphone, you probably hear a lot of wind noise, but I'm sat here now right next to it, and I can hardly hear it. 
I'm just speaking in a normal volume voice as you can hear. Uh, I don't know how the mic will pick it up, but it's it's almost totally inaudible right next to me. So there's no way would it keep you awake or anything like that. And as you can see, it moves a good distance and uh, a reasonable speed. So we'll stop it as it's pointing away from the mic, so I'm not getting any wind noise. So if I hold this tissue paper, so that's it on speed one. And on speed two. Again, it's hard to tell there it's on a bit of tissue paper, it's blowing it pretty much horizontal. But you'll hear the difference in noise and on speed three. So that's on maximum speed now. And yeah, that's noise that would probably would annoy you at, at, at night. But it's not terrible. It's a low pitched, it's not a high pitched screaming noise like the little box fan I reviewed with the, the ice cubes in it's, it's not as, nothing like as bad as that and uh, back onto speed one it's it's almost totally inaudible so uh, yeah go back onto oscillation and you can see how uh, how quiet it is I'll just not talk and see what the mic picked up And the whole thing is absolutely easily liftable. It's not going to go anywhere on the, on the floor, but it's, it's easily transportable. So we'll put it away now and we'll do a final summing up. So there you have it. Uh, hope it was of some use. Uh, the tests, bit inconclusive uh, with um, the wind speed. I've got them written down here. I put them on screen. But uh, on the new fan, as we turned up the velocity measured by the anemometer, it did go up from like 1.1 to, to over 2 between low and high settings. But on the old pedestal fan and the little desk fan, the white one, it stayed round about 1, 1 1.2, whether it was on low or high. So probably best ignoring the wind speed indications um i probably didn't set it up properly i did something wrong it's not a scientific test i got that little anemometer for measuring the wind speed at my local flying field just to give it a reference but uh, you can tell a difference between low and high obviously in force but i think low is a great set and it's a nice gentle breeze and easily enough to get to you and keep you cool in bed which is what i got it for and like i said a remote control is ideal for that i forgot to say on the remote control when you get it you get the usual bit of plastic that you pull out because it's got a button cell in here and if ever you have trouble getting these drawers out you think you just pull it some just pull out but if you find one that doesn't like this that little bit there a bit hard to see but that little tab there you squeeze that in i can't really show you properly with but you squeeze that in to the center of the drawer as you pull it out like i say it's not hard to it's not easy to show you on screen but once you've pushed that in to the center there that tab you can then pull the drawer out and you've got your little button cell in there for the remote but that should last you a good 12 months or whatever so yeah Really, really pleased. Under 20 quid for all them features and a three-year warranty. Absolute bargain. So I hope this has been of some use to you. If you like these reviews, please, please, please click the little picture of the shed here to subscribe. Please leave me a thumbs up if you like it. And I'll be back with another review as soon as I find something to buy. Thanks for watching this one. See you for the next one. Bye for now.